In this video using Apple Motion, we're gonna recreate this bullet list inspired by Nisha's channel, which was requested by a Patreon member over on my Patreon Discord. As a Patreon member, you can download these project files and use them directly inside of Final Cut Pro right now. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can go up to File, then select New from Project Browser. In the Project Browser, we're gonna select the Final Cut title. We're gonna wanna set our duration to something around 10 seconds, and then I recommend you set your frame rate and preset to whatever you typically like to work with inside of Final Cut Pro. After that, we can push Open. The first thing we're gonna need to do is to get rid of the title background and type text here layers. So I'm gonna hold Shift and select both of them, then we can press backspace to delete them. From there, we're gonna need to create our circle. So let's come on down to the rectangle tool. And if we click this down arrow next to that, we'll see we have an option for a circle. Clicking anywhere in our viewer, we can drag and hold shift, and that is going to create a perfectly symmetrical circle. Let's go up to the inspector in the top left, then go to properties, and locate the position. From there, we'll come to the right side, clicking on this down arrow and select reset parameter. And that's going to set it directly in the center. This is just gonna make the whole animation process a bit simpler. Now, what's gonna be super important is that we have an outline and then inside of that outline, we are masking out the line that's being drawn behind it. So let's set up for that. We'll select the main circle we've already created, go into the shape settings, and then underneath the fill, we'll see that we have outline. After that, we can go ahead and disable the fill. And now taking a look in our viewer, we should have a circle with just an outline. But I wanna be able to use the inside of that circle to cut out the line. So we're gonna to need to duplicate this main circle. Selecting that circle, go ahead and push Command D to duplicate it. And we're just gonna call this one the alpha cutout. From there, we can come on over to the left side and disable the outline, but enable the fill. Let's rename the group that contains both of these layers. So I'm just gonna call this circle one for right now. Let's go ahead and animate it coming into place. To do so, we'll go on over to, into our properties and with the main circle group selected, we can animate it all together as a single unit. Let's come on down to the scale and we'll click the down arrow next to the scale, select add parameter behavior, and we're going to use something called the overshoot parameter, which is one of my favorite animation parameters inside of Apple Motion. Let's go up to the top left and you'll see the start value is set to 0%. Our original value of our circle is at 100%, so we need to negate that. To do so, we'll select our overshoot parameter. Under the start value, we'll set this to negative 100%. So now we've completely zeroed out our object. However, if we play through, the animation is going to be extremely slow. So let's go ahead and speed that up. Making sure the overshoot parameter is selected, let's come forward about 30 frames or so. And then I'm going to push O on my keyboard and that will trim it down to the playhead. So pushing play, the animation is quite a bit faster. Now I wanna add a little bit more pop to it and maybe less of this rubbery jiggle that it has at the end end. So let's go over to the left side and we'll change the cycles over to something like 0.5 and increase the acceleration all the way up to 100%. So let's see how that pops in and that looks really nice to me. All I want to see is the outline of the circle. So let's come on up to the top left and deselect the alpha cutout. Next, I want the outline to be drawn on as if somebody's using a pen to quickly draw in a circle. To do so, let's find our main circle component and we'll go up to behaviors, go down to shape, and then we're going to select right on. This is going to automatically animate the circle drawing on over time. But again, it's really, really slow and we wanna speed that up drastically. To do so, we'll come forward about 15 frames this time. And with that right on parameter selected, we'll push O and that will set the out point, thus trimming it down. And pushing play, we now have this really cool looking animation of our circle drawing into place. Now that we have our first circle created, it's gonna be so much simpler to create all of the others. Let's go ahead and move our first circle into position. So I've selected circle one, the group, and actually let's go ahead and collapse this to really clarify things. And then going over to the left side, let's set the position value to negative 1,750 and then we'll set the Y value to 850. You can set this to wherever you like, but I recommend using specific values to make lining them up that much simpler. Let's go ahead and select the circle and push Command D to duplicate it. We'll rename it to be Circle 2. 
Then going over to our properties, let's set the Y value to zero. So it's directly in the center. And finally, let's add a third circle. Circle three, go to our properties and set this to negative 850. If you wanted to add more bullet points to this, you absolutely could do so. But just to keep this tutorial concise, I'm only doing three. If you wanted to add more points, you're just gonna need to replicate the steps that we've taken here. I don't really want all three of these circles popping in at the exact same time. So let's go ahead and find a point where we want the second circle to pop in. And I'm finding somewhere around the 15 frame mark is pretty good. Let's select circle two, and we can either just click and drag it over into position here on the timeline, or let's select circle three, move forward another 15 frames, and we can push shift left bracket, and that will push it forward ahead in the timeline to wherever our playhead is at. Pushing play, now we have each individual circle appearing as it should. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add in our line and make sure it's being masked out by each individual circle. But before we get into that, I just wanted to mention that I do create Final Cut Pro plugins and you can go and pick them up at fcbplugins.com. To create our line, come on over to where your circle tool is, clicking that down arrow, select the line tool. And I'm going to click and drag and hold shift to make sure it's perfectly straight. Now I'm noticing it dropped it into our circle three group. So let's just make sure we click and drag that out of that group. Next, with our line selected, let's find the position and we're going to reset that parameter so it's directly in the center. I also want to make sure it's really precisely lined up with these circles. So let's go on over into our shape settings, go to geometry, and under point one, we can go ahead and make sure that that Y value is set to 850 because that's where we place that first circle. And let's set point two to negative 850. After that, we can go into our properties and just type in negative 1750 and now it should be perfectly lined up. So as it is, we have our circle points popping in and we have our line in place, but it's not drawing in and it's not being cut out by our circles. So let's first go ahead and cut this line out. To do so, we're going to right click on our line and select add image mask. From there, go ahead and expand out your first circle and we'll find our alpha cutout layer that we made previously. From there, I can click and drag it into that mask source well. Now, if you take a look, you're gonna notice that your line is only appearing inside of the circle. So we need to invert that. To do so, go on over to your mask blend mode and change it from add over to subtract. So now it is cutting out the line wherever that circle appears. And what's super great is we can add in more image masks exactly like this one for the other point. So I'm gonna push command D, find circle two, locate the alpha cutout and drag it into this well, then command D, locate circle three, find alpha cutout and drag that into that final image mask. So now that we have our line getting cut out by these circles, we just need to animate it drawing on. Select your line, go up to behaviors, go down to shape, and then select right on. We can actually change the style of this drawing on, which is really cool. So I'm gonna change the speed from constant over to decelerate, and I'm going to move my playhead to about where I want the animation to end, somewhere in there, and push O. That's going to trim that down, and so pushing play, we now have this really elegant looking line animation. Finally, we just need to add in our title layers. Come on over to your title tool, and we can click to create a new text object. I'm just gonna write in point one, and you can make this whatever font you like over here on the left-hand side. I'll just leave it as Roboto for right now. I wanna make sure that this is in its own individual group, so I'll just drag that out, and we can just call this the titles group. Let's move point one into position, and that's looking pretty good to me. Now let's go ahead and animate this. To do so, we'll go up to behaviors, go down to text basic, and then we can select any of these various options that we like. I really like how slide in looks. And if we were to push play, we can see how that animates in in a really nice way. Let's go ahead and add in our other points. So selecting point one, I'm gonna push command D. We can drag it down into position. We could call it point two and then do the exact same thing for point three. Command D, drag it into position and make it point three. Now they're all drawing in at the exact same time and I would love for them to draw in as their individual bubbles are being created. So to do so, let's move forward 15 frames to our second bubble being drawn in and drag point two there. Then let's go to 30 frames and we'll drag point three. 
And pushing play, you can see we've created this super elegant looking animation. Finally, we always want these animation speeds to be consistent over in Final Cut Pro. If we were to extend out the duration, it would really slow down how these animations play out. So to do that, let's go ahead and find where the animation ends after point three, which should be around here, and we'll push Shift M to add a marker to our timeline. Go ahead and double click that marker and change the type from standard over to build in optional. This is going to give you the option of whether or not you want this to animate in or if you want it to just immediately appear as it is in its final state. After that, we can just push Command S to save it and this will allow us to publish it to Final Cut Pro. So we can just call this bullet points and I can throw this into whatever category I like. I'll create a new category and I'll just call it FCB's Patreon. After that, we can push create and push publish. Don't forget as a Patreon member, you can download this project file and use it in Final Cut Pro right now. Also don't forget about my Apple Motion Masterclass with over eight hours of in-depth training all about Apple Motion. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And with that being said, I cannot wait to see you in the next one.